Hola, welcome to Butterfly Spanish. Me llamo Ana. En la clase de hoy, in today's lesson, we're going to learn the verb to bring. To bring, but en español. To bring equals llevar or traer. Two verbs in Spanish for one in English. Dos verbos en español y uno en inglés. For example, when I say, uh, can you bring the cake? And you say, yes, I can bring it. Ha! Huh. In English, you're using the same verb. But if you were speaking Spanish, you would be using different verbs, two different verbs. One to bring here and one to bring over there. Do you understand? Well, in order to understand, I'm going to teach you this lesson in the following um, order. First, we're going to see that llevar and traer are two different verbs that end with the first conjugation, a, R, R, and er, the second conjugation. So first, we're going to go through these verbs and you're going to repeat after me these verbs. Once we understand those verbs, we're going to go to some examples and you'll see how you're going to use either or. And then at the end, I'm going to give you the secret. Ha! Huh? So you cannot just stop the lesson, now you have to wait. <laughs> Very good, so let's start with um, uh, reviewing the verbs. Para, eh, vamos a empezar con los verbos. Okay, and you're going to repeat after me. Yo llevo. Yo llevo. Tú llevas. Tú llevas. Él lleva. Ella lleva. Usted, formal, lleva. See, the difference is to, is informal, is casual. And usted is formal. And you will say, tú llevas, usted lleva. Nosotros, we, llevamos. Nosotros, llevamos. In Spain, they say, vosotros, lleváis. Vosotros lleváis. But in Latin America, we say, ustedes llevan. If you are saying you plural, you would say, vosotros lleváis. In Spain, if you're saying you plural in Latin America, you would say, ustedes llevan. So it depends where you're going to speak Spanish, then you can use either or. I Use ustedes because I am from Mexico. And in Mexico, we use these ustedes. Very good. So let's say, again, let's say it again. Otra vez. Ustedes llevan. Ellos llevan. Ellas llevan. Now, if you see here, I'm going to show you something. I wrote this verb twice. But I wrote, I wrote it twice so you can see it. Llevan. And llevan, it is the same. But the people we're talking about is different. We're saying you plural, and they, and they, f females, and they, males. For that conjugation, we have the same ending. If you're speaking Latin America, you can say ustedes, ellos, ellas, and use this form, llevan. But if you're using vosotros, you have to make sure you're going to use Llevais, because they, in Spain, they use a different uh, pronoun and a different ending. Very good. So you can see here, it is a very regular verb, and by that I'm saying uh, the root, you know, keeps being the same. Yep, 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 yep. And you just have to memorize the endings, correct? The ending for the first conjugation, and the first conjugation in Spanish is A, R. Very good. So you can go to your book or your dictionary, or just Google it to the Dictionary of the Royal Academy and see what's the correct conjugation. Very good. Now let's, next, let's move on with the second verb, the verb traer. Very good. Now this verb traer, as you will see, it has, it, it's a little bit rebellious compared to llevar. Llevar is a very 
good friend of ours, but traer is trying to trick us, and that's why the first person, traigo, is not going to be as regular, right? If you say traer, and then it says, oh, it changes by I-G-O. Well, yes, it's a little bit irregular, but just 1%, because all the rest, you'll see, it is the same. It keeps try, 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 and then you just add the endings. The first person, it'll be regular. The rest will be regular. Uh, compared to the first one, this is a little bit more tricky, but not impossible. So just try it. Let's do it. Yo traigo. So repeat it after me. Yo traigo. Very good. Tú traes. Tú traes. Él trae. Ella trae. Usted, formal, trae. Let's go to the plural ones. Nosotros, we, traemos. Now, if you were in Spain, how would you say? Vosotros traéis. Vosotros traéis. Ustedes traen. You plural in Latin America. Ellos traen. And ellas, they, the females, traen. You see, it is very simple. Only the first one for traer, it is a little irregular. The rest is the same. You just have to memorize the endings. And remember, it's not so difficult to memorize the endings of these verbs because these verbs are actually very regular. <laughs> so you don't get more regular than that. So if you memorize these endings, you can apply them for all regular verbs. Do you understand? Well, if you don't, you have to go and check your dictionary and see and find how what I'm saying is the root keeps being the same, the ending changes but the ending changes to a certain point. That point is you memorize the endings and the endings are regular. Now, if you would like to know more about it, you may want to check my lessons on verbs. Now, let's see. Why am I using these two verbs for one verb in English? Well, to say to bring in Spanish, we use different, these different verbs, to bring, traer, or llevar. And here I wrote some examples so we can learn based on examples. So it is clear. Para que quede claro. So it is clear. Para que quede claro. Very good. In my example, I speak about Rosita and Pedro. And Rosita and Pedro are very good friends. So let's see what Rosita says. Rosita said, because I, I'm using the past here, Rosita said, Dijo, te invito a mi fiesta. She told Pedro, te invito a mi fiesta. I invite you to my party. Maybe in English you would say, oh, uh, I'm having a party, you can come. But in Spanish you would say, te invito a mi fiesta. Maybe you want to add, hola. <laughs> hola, Pedro, te invito a mi fiesta. I invite you to my party. That's the way you would say it in Spanish. One of the ways. There might be more ways, but I'm telling you like basic, regular, common ways. Te invito a mi fiesta. I invite you to my party. Okay, stop repeating that, Ana. Already said it. Very good. Now, Pedro said, Oh, gracias. Gracias. Hi, and let's start. Pay attention here. ¿Quieres que lleve algo? Do you want me to bring something? Now, let's repeat it. ¿Quieres? Que lleve algo? ¿Quieres que lleve algo? Do you want me to bring something? And then Rosita said, Sí. Yes, sí. ¿Puedes traer el pastel? Can you bring the cake? Yes, she asked for the cake. Ella que quiere el pastel. Gratis. Sí, ¿puedes traer el pastel? And Pedro said, Pedro dijo, sí, claro, of course, yes, of course, sí, claro, yes, of course, sí, claro, 
puedo llevar el pastel. Pedro could have said to, sí, llevo el pastel entonces. Which would be equivalent to say, yes, I'll bring the cake then. Llevo el pastel entonces. O sí, llevaré el pastel. Pedro is using three different ways to give an answer. Now, if I were Pedro, I would just say this one because it is very common and Rosita understands this one because it's very used, very uh, often used between uh, Spanish native speakers. If I were Pedro, I would use this one. But Pedro an could answer in three different ways. Now imagine you're Pedro. So, oh, you see, Pedro, no, Pedro. Imagine you're Pedro and pick the one that you like the most and that best fits your mouth muscles because then you'll be more you and you can say it more naturally. Very good. Ana has selected. Sí, claro. Puedo llevar el pastel because it's more relaxed. Sí, claro. Puedo llevar el pastel. Sí, claro. Puedo llevar el pastel. Very good. Now, Let's review this. When Rosita asks for the cake, Rosita is here. Rosita is here in her house. See, let's see Rosita with her uh, hair, okay? And then Rosita is here in her house, okay? Her house, very, pure, very pretty. And Pedro is here in, maybe he's in his house too, but it's here, right? So when Rosita is asking Pedro, Puedes, um, where is it? Rosita is saying, ¿Puedes traer el pastel? Rosita is saying, can you bring the cake, bring it here to the party, right? Now say, Pedro says, yes, I can bring the cake. Pedro is here and say, yes, puedo llevar el pastel because Pedro is saying, puedo llevar, because he's here and he has to bring it over here. And Rosita is here, aquí, and she is asking Pedro to bring it here. When you are asking someone to bring something where you are, you're going to use the verb traer. But when you're bringing something somewhere, somewhere else, but here, you're going to use the verb llevar. Do you understand? Now, for example, to make this even clearer, if I ask you, okay, well, I'm going to have my birthday party. Voy a hacer una fiesta de cumpleaños. Es mi cumpleaños. Es mi cumpleaños. It is my birthday. I'm going to have a party. Voy a hacer una fiesta. Te invito a mi fiesta. I invite you to my party. Te invito a mi fiesta. What you, would you say? Would you say no? Well, I hope you say sí. Claro. And you, if you are very polite, you would ask, ¿Quieres que lleve algo? ¿Quieres que lleve algo? And you, I would say, well, I would say no, because if I want to have a party, I'll make sure I have everything to share because it is my party. But maybe I'm a little bit cheap. So I said, oh, yes, can you bring uh, mariachis? Puedes traer los mariachis, right? You are asking, ¿Quieres que lleve? Because you are there and I'm talking about my party here. I'm asking you to bring traer from there, from whatever, to hear, but you are saying, ¿Quieres que lleve? You're using the verb llevar because you are going to go somewhere else. Do you understand? That this is why Rosita is telling Pedro, puede, uh, why, this is why Rosita is asking, um, puedes traer? And Pedro is saying, si sí puedo llevar. That is why, too, Pedro is saying, ¿Quieres que lleve? Do you want me to bring? Because he's going to take something, el pastel, o la torta, 
La torta is the cake in um, South America, like Latin America, except for Mexico. In Mexico, we say el pastel, but that's that's a good way. Uh, that's a good word to to remember. Torta and pastel, two translations for cake. One is for Mexico, the other is for Latin, the rest of Latin America. Very good. I'll give you an anecdote in a second. Uh, uh, so then, do you understand what I'm saying is, traer is to bring here because you're asking, you're going somewhere where you need it. Llevar is to bring with you somewhere else. So I'll give you an example. I went on vacation for a couple of days to visit my brother. Uh, and I, I forgot my camera and my mom called and I say, oh, mamá, se me olvidó la cámara. I forgot my camera. Se me olvidó la cámara. And she's like, oh, you always forget stuff. I'm sorry. And I asked her, ¿puedes traer la cámara? I asked my mom, ¿puedes traer la cámara? And, he, and she replied, yes, I'm going to bring the camera. Si la puedo llevar. Why? Because I'm telling my mom, traer, because I'm here. I want her to bring that here. And she is using llevar because she is bringing that object here, from there to here. And I'm already here. Now, maybe you're like, Oh, Anna is being very complicated today. She got up and she's in a bad mood and try, she's trying to make things complicated for me. Well, I'm not. I'm trying to explain the different scenarios. Escenarios in Spanish. Escenarios. Now, let's see. Imagine Pedro got to the party. Pedro gets to the party all dressed up and yes, let's go dancing, all that stuff. Fiesta, fiesta, mucha fiesta. And then Rosita comes to Pedro and says, Hey, Pedro, ¿traes el pastel? Because everybody's asking for el pastel, por la torta, for the cake. ¿Traes el pastel? ¿Traes la torta? Maybe if she's from, uh, from Venezuela, imagine. And then Pedro's like, Uy, qué pena, se me olvidó. Oh, what, what embarrassment. I forgot it. Se me olvidó. Right? That's what he's saying. So Rosita is like, hey, Pedro, ¿traes el pastel? Do you bring the, 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 the cake? ¿Traes el pastel? Huh? Pedro replied, uy, or qué pena, what an embarrassment. Like, oh, qué pena, like what an embarrassment. Qué pena. No lo traigo. I didn't bring it. No lo traigo. I didn't bring it. I forgot it. Se me olvidó. Now, if you see, Rosita is asking, traes, the verb traer. Tú traes. Tú traes el pastel. But remember that in Spanish, if it's not ambiguous, we uh, prefer not to use the pronoun, right? Here it's not ambiguous. We know who's talking. We know who are the people who are talking. Rosita says, traes el pastel, the verb traer. And then Pedro says, uh, no, I didn't bring it. No lo traje. Why is Pedro saying here, llevar and here traer, if Pedro is the same person? Well, maybe because he has a lot of vocabulary, but that is an option. The other option is because Pedro is already in the party. He's not over there in his house anymore saying, oh, sí, lo llevaré. I'm bringing it. He's already where he was supposed to bring the cake. Do you understand that? What he says, no lo traje, from there to here. Traer is from there to here. Llevar is from here to there. This is why in Spanish, we use two different verbs because we express the same idea to bring depending on the direction. Imagine Pedro and Rosita, well, Rosita, they are best friends. So Rosita maybe goes and buys some pinguinos to the, to the corner store. You know, the pinguinos, like little cakes with whipped cream that I really like, the pinguinos. So maybe she goes and buys some pinguinos for the guests. That's what happens when you make, you have a party and you don't, you don't have everything to share with the, 
with the guests, right? If you're having a party, I think you should buy everything. But Rosita was like, oh yeah, can you bring the party? She made the party with all her friends, sure. I make two hundreds of parties if it was like that, if it were like that. But that's my personal thing. Okay, now imagine in that party, uh, Rosi Rosita is uh, invited to a different celebration. Maybe Julio invited Rosita to a different celebration. And so Julio said, Rosita, te invito a mi fiesta. Rosita, te invito a mi fiesta. I invite you to my party. And Rosita said, gracias. ¿Quieres que lleve algo? Thank you. Do you want me to bring something? And Julio said, mm, ¿Puedes llevar el guacamole? Sí, claro. Puedo llevar el guacamole. Rosita replied. They are using the verb llevar because they are going to take that guacamole or whatever it is to the other party. From here, over there to a different celebration. That's what I, uh, th that's what they are using the verb llevar. Now, last time I went out with my friends. My friend, uh, one of my friends, uh, it was her birthday. So we went out and they wanted to go to this uh, martini place. I don't really like martinis, but it was my friend's celebration. So I went, fui con ellas. So all my friends were like outside the place and the guy, when I was going like to enter the place, the guy is like, ¿Puedo ver tu credencial? Can I see your ID? He asked me, can I see your ID? ¿Puedo ver tu credencial? He said, ¿Puedo ver tu credencial? Can I see your ID? And I said, no la traigo. No la traigo. Why am I saying no la traigo? Because I didn't bring it from there to here, from my house to this horrible place that I didn't want to go anyway, right? So I was actually glad he asked that because I'm like, oh, now I have an excuse. <laughs> I said, no, no la traigo. No, no la traigo. I didn't bring it. So he's like, well, cannot enter this place without an ID. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I left. <laughs> Do you understand? I said, I didn't bring it. Now, when I got home, my mom asked me, oh, why are you here? I thought you were going to go to like your friends and that and that. And I said, because no llevé mi credencial. I am using the past there because I didn't bring my ID, which means no llevé from here to there. No llevé mi credencial. I'm using two different verbs. No la traigo. I didn't bring it. I'm not carrying it. No la llevé means I didn't bring it. No la llevé from there, from my house to the other place. I didn't want to go anyway, so thank you for asking for my ID. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed my lesson. Uh, if you like my lesson, subscribe to my channel. And if you didn't like my lesson, then subscribe to my channel anyway, because you might under learn something and speak Spanish very soon, even better than me, más que yo. And I hope to see you soon. Have a good weekend. Que tengas buen fin de semana. And nos vemos pronto. Besides subscribing to my channel, you can donate to my channel. You can ask me questions, you can participate in the forum, and you can speak Spanish. Hablar, puedes, podrás hablar español muy pronto con Butterfly Spanish. Hasta pronto.